multiple Monday night football games to go over and an important waiver wire episode with players we don't even know how to pronounce. You're going to want to check it out. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Tuesday edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway back with you. Game. Well, I was going to say week three in the books, not game three. We had two games last night. Were you able to handle the stress of two games, Mike? It's, again, it is not the stress. It is just the logistics of, of watching them, and I did. I had... One game on the big screen, one game on my little tablet. So it's just it's not as enjoyable. That's have all you, I'm saying. Have you ever done the thing where I mean your tablet's so close to you, right? Yes. So then have you ever held it up right like close to you and then seen the TV in the background and noticed how uh, it's like so I can only see it with one eye? Well, no, I mean I'm just saying they're like the same size relative to how close they are to you. Have you ever done that before? Like, if you hold it up, it you will look just, yeah, it will look it exactly like your TV perspective on the Perspective where it is identically sized. I'm just trying to I've, help. I've not done that. I'm not strong enough to hold up a tablet for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have a waiver wire episode today, an important one, and uh, we're three weeks in. And, Mike, you, you didn't spend Monday night in some sort of depression state. You had... Jamar Chase emerged hey, from look, the look at that from the muck and and amazingly Jamar Chase had a very good game and yet Joe Burrow was a disaster for fantasy players yet again he was I think eleven fantasy points in one of our league formats yeah twenty six passes completed out of forty nine attempts two hundred fifty nine yards had a pick he was really atrocious especially for what we we want from Joe Burrow and yet the line of 256 on his prop he managed to surpass it by three yards so he got me twice guys <laughs> he got me you he went, got me so of course wait, I so, took the under so you bet against Burrow You're so that right, you could be happy if he disappointed you with Chase yeah and he disappointed me and he took my money this situation with Joe Burrow is in in many ways more difficult than if they threw him on IR and you went out and you were trying to find a better situation at, at quarterback because he's limited mobility-wise. You're not going to get any yards on the ground. You're not going to get bigger plays because a lot of those emerge from getting outside the pocket, extending the play, letting players get downfield. That was the biggest problem I felt like I was seeing. I'm like, this is just, it's all just Joe Burrow checking it down short. Like, attack the field, but then you're like, well, no, he can't buy himself any extra time, so if he feels – the pocket collapsing at all, he has to throw the ball. Even just the zip on the ball, you know, it's it, sure. It, yeah, yeah. It, it takes your legs to throw well. Yes. So you know, if you don't have all the your normal power, he didn't look like himself. He won't look like himself. Honestly, it was a huge blessing that he was the latest game of the week because that caused many fantasy managers to forcibly pivot, not knowing if he was going to be active. You know, I I know. Uh, Mike and I in our league, we chose to start Derek Carr over. Did Carr outscore Burrow? He probably had to, <laughs> even though he left the game. Well, early. Yeah, he had the touchdown to Jimmy Graham early in the game. That's uh, so they were probably neck and neck. I mean, Jamar Chase was good. Joe Mixon was good. T. Higgins was not eight targets. No, eight targets for T. Higgins, which means he has a game where he had eight targets and no receptions, and now he has a game with eight targets and two receptions. He two for twenty one. I know you said something about an injury this morning, Mike, but I am not seeing any there reports was, of injury. We just we got we got buzzed last night, like right after his second terrible drop. It was T. Higgins is leaving for injury. It was getting passed around on Twitter. So I, yeah, I, I'm trying to find some more information about yeah, it. Yeah, I guess Matthew Betts is saying cramps. Okay, all right, there then, you go. So uh, some cramps, but it was 
fantasy managers cramping up with yeah. two for eight, uh, it, two for sixteen in those two games. It was the perfect storm for T. Higgins of him getting terrible targets yet again, and then the good targets. It looked like he was almost surprised <laughs> that the target hit him in the hands. He was sh he was so shocked that he just he dropped it horrifically at least twice. Uh, I mean, it's T. Higgins is a high variance player. You get weeks like that. You also get weeks like week two where he was a weak or winning type of a player. You just that's uh, you ride that out. Yeah, I mean, we talk so much about targets, and sometimes we get really disappointed when they're uncatchable. But maybe we just need to adjust the way we're kind of looking at those tar like Kyron Williams last night did you guys watch oh yeah his, his, I mean, he was he had no chance to catch yeah, most of those targets but it was also it was nice that he was receiving the eyeballs of his quarterback and mm -hmm. the ball was getting uh, mer uh you know unceremoniously chucked in his direction <laughs> he had seven targets he only caught two of them uh Puka Nakua oh his night was saved with the 40 37. 37 yard it should have been 40 oh because he, he easily could have scored on easily that play. wide open there's a little bit of Stafford's issue there he just didn't air it out enough yeah if Stafford hits him uh you know Stafford saw him threw it made the right read and and it was great because it was a nice 37 yard play for for Puka it should have been a 40 yard touchdown easily that was uh as basically you won't call it garbage time but like very very into the game yeah, trying to catch up trying to catch up before the uh unsuccessful onside kick it was not a good game for the offense. A lot of pressure on Matthew Stafford. Uh, threw two interceptions, took six sacks. Tutu Outwell looked good again. Mm -hmm. Got into the end zone maybe twice. People still debating that play. It looked. It's, I thought he was out of bounds. Did you? I, I did. I but the, some people were talking about the toe. That's and, that's. Yeah. A, I saw it is that the heel is clearly up. There so was controversy. How can the heel be out of bounds? It was. It was. You can argue either way, but the fact that it was called a touchdown and then they took it back with what looked like non-conclusive evidence to me was strange. The NFL has enough money where they could actually put a microchip in every blade of grass, <laughs> and we could know this definitively. Um, we were was it this past weekend or the weekend before? We were like, why is there no yeah perfect down the goal line? Yes, that makes no sense. There I should mean, be like four dedicated cameras. Yeah, I'll, uh, how about ten? How about 10? Sure. But you I mean, put them everywhere. Just You know where the end zone is. NFL, you literally yeah, you, you know, know exactly where you need these you cameras. You put them there. You, and there there are these crazy lenses now where the camera doesn't have to be right there. The camera right. can zoom. Oh, it's it called can be a like, zoom lens? Yeah, zoom lens. They just invented this. And so you could have the you could 10 feet away, 20 feet away. We've and also then, got lasers and stuff to, like, break the plane of – I mean, there should you never ever be a question before? on the goal line. Yeah. You ever see what tennis – tennis has got those computers, and you can see oh, down whoa. to the microscopic level where everyone, this ball is hitting. It everyone blows gets to do that. my mind that it's like, well, the cameras are on one side of the field. It's like, <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. I mean, this wait, is... you only have a camera down this? Like, when, whenever there's that, that question of you're, they're trying to find the ball, you know, in a pile or whatever, but they only have a camera from one one direction. like And it's angled. Right. It's it, like, just this is a, Just put in a bulk order. 32 teams, 32 cameras, add one on the other side. Right. Just it, start there. At this point, though, I mean, because you have, the, and you have the chains, which is, like the most archaic dinosaur way of doing things. It really is. Especially when they move them. Like, well, they got to move the chains back. Like, no, they they can figure it out. I'm like, no, there's when they are moving the chains back, they are there is they are not 100 percent getting it in the same spot. And at this point, is this a keep all, some jobs? Is this a, well? It's all press is good press. Like the NFL mm, actually yeah. look. We have now spent five minutes. Getting fired up, oh, talking, man. talking about how stupid they do things, and they're like, "Yeah, we're the stupid ones." This is galaxy brain <laughs> yeah, we stuff. We got you. Good job, NFL. We fell for it again. I can still remember that stinking <laughs> uh, golden take call in the end zone. Oh, oh, but that was the that was the scab refs, though. <laughs> it was the scab <laughs> refs. I'm just saying that was when the, that was when the refs were on strike. Are you oh, talking about? Oh, yeah. You're talking about where they they called two separate touchdowns. I'm just saying we talked about it for now. Yeah. Yep. Ever. Um, waiver wire show today signed CMC jersey giveaway up on the website footcoingiveaway.com uh, we've got a variety a smattering of different records here in the studio Deucer's Alley over there uh, Al Borland with the improbable 3-0 and in Dynasty 
trying to uh, rebuild. He's trying to trust so, the process. <laughs> yeah. So so talk to me, guys. Let's let's give some uh, very direct, and then you know it'll be broad to the community out there. But what do you do if you're in Al's situation? His dynasty team. <laughs> Was Winning. not projected to win ball games. This was it's a, still not. It's still not. Well, this is my point. He's he's stumbled, bumbled his way to three and zero, starting players like Rico Dowdle, uh, by necessity, and he, he scores. What do you do at this point? You know, tons of future picks, wants to be rebuilding, wants high picks in the future, and yet you end up three and zero in a dynasty league. What is your evaluation process when it comes to? towing the line because they have those picks they could go all in they could go make trades yeah that and that's the direction they should they should head while I don't want him to uh I don't want anyone else in the league to win people have to um the 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 way that you have won I mean if you are a surprising winner it's probably because you have a handful of players you didn't expect to be good who are good and that's the case with you you have Puka Nakua who is a revelation you have DeAndre Swift who you thought was not going to be good? Oh and, man, we and, should talk about and him. And he's hit mm. Tank Dell. Um, another surprise. You know, it's it. You don't win completely accidentally. Um, there are players that step up, and if you find yourself three and zero, then you keep pressing. And on the on the flip side, in a normal redraft league, if you're zero and three, do not freak out and do not think you are done at all. We say this every year. We say it now, and we say it next week, and we say it the following week because one of my favorite things that happens every single year are the 0-5 teams, the teams that just are down in the dumps that come back and sneak into the playoffs and win a championship. It happens all the time. 0-3 is nothing. Everyone in your league is going to lose at least three times. So don't worry about it. It's a good point, and I was going to move on, and I forgot we had a whole nother Monday night football game to talk about on top of the Bengals beating the Rams, which is the 25-11 uh, to 11 whipping the Eagles put on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, from a Tampa side, there was one player that you would have been happy that you played in this football game, and that was Mike Evans, who ended up 5 for 60 and a touchdown on 10 targets. Could have been a much bigger game for Mike Evans. He dropped an earlier yeah, touchdown. He, he had a couple drops on the sideline. But it is nice to see in a game that they were manhandled thoroughly, you still got a good game from him. Still a nice performance from Mike Evans and uh, 10 targets again. He's been great. Um, he, he had some missed opportunities as well. Uh, you know, the, uh, I remember a big third down play. Ball was a little high, but, you know, he could have caught it, usually would. He just looks outstanding. He is the clear most important player. Reed in this offense he is the one he is the alpha if there were questions coming in in your heart between Chris Godwin and Mike Evans it's been definitively and clearly answered for Baker but you know Baker Mayfield's dude is Mike Evans he's been outstanding and I don't think he's going away so it was a great call by you Andy I know this was one of your favorite players in fact I believe your quote was the most confident you've ever been in one of your guys in the nine years we've been doing this so hopefully people listen it's a long season, Jason. You yeah. just said it. No, no, no. It can't, very it, happy with this. Nothing the... could happen bad <laughs> for Mike Evans the rest of the way. Big bounce back game for A.J. Brown. Nine for 131. You were expecting it. You got it. The storyline here, I mean, it was a down game for Devontae Smith. Um, a down game for the twos in this sure. night, right? Yeah, God, yeah. Godwin, Higgins, Devontae Smith. Uh, but A.J. Brown, big game. They were going to Dallas Goddard early and often, and then, you know, it kind of five for 41. That's a that's what we call a pits. Yeah, it's fine if for a tight end. A little disappointing that they're still not using him down the field, but you're going to keep playing him. He's talented on a good offense. I think the big story here is DeAndre Swift. Yeah, the running backs. I mean, DeAndre Swift, 16 for 130. Uh, it is It has been easy to look at the film and say he is running through highways of lanes but the truth is, is the reason that's happening in part is because he is so explosive from first touch. Like, he gets the ball. He's identifying the freeway that has been formed for him. Mm -hmm. And then he is explosive. Puts his blinker on. He signals. I don't know if he signals, Mike. <laughs> I think he's probably breaking some laws. Mm -hmm. But he's definitely speeding. He and says, uh, catch me if you can, coppers. <laughs> I mean, he is so swift. 
Yeah, I mean, it, Kenneth Gainwell has the same highway lanes to run through, and he had 14 carries on the ground, ended up with 43 yards. So you see a difference here, and Swift has obviously earned it. He's Gainwell startable. was healthy, yeah, and we saw uh, Gainwell was healthy enough to get 14 carries. I mean, they they weren't they weren't giving him like rest first week back from the injury. This was just the rotation. So uh, you can have full confidence in DeAndre Swift going forward right now. Jalen Hurts, 23 for 37. Uh, tush push, touchdown, and yep. then a uh, one through the air through a, a heck of a throw to uh, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Yeah, what a what it a was, pass that was. It, uh, how did you guys feel like Jalen Hurts looked? Not that great. Okay, because that was my takeaway, About too, the same as the first two games. Is the You got a great fantasy output, you know, almost 300 passing yards, a, a, a passing touchdown, and the rushing touchdown. But I felt like... It yeah he did have two interceptions as well it just he didn't he did not he still has not looked like last year's Jalen Hurst the throw to Zacchaeus was fantastic but it was I mean he got absolutely crushed because he had to wait so long for it to happen and well I mean look I, I, Jalen Hurts moving forward I don't like I'm not gonna overly worry about him for fantasy he should be safe but it's it is strange watching him play and feeling like I'm not watching a great quarterback right now. It is bearing itself out in fantasy. I mean, right now, Jalen Hurts is the quarterback eight by points per game. And okay. so you're feeling that a little bit. I do mean, you have the list in front of I you? Do. I do. I thought me, I'd go through some of these yeah, names yeah. through three weeks because uh, did you want the quarterbacks? Is that what you're yes, saying? Yes, please. Yeah, so right now, points per game, the quarterback one is Kirk Cousins. Quarterback two is Justin is this, Herbert. This is six, six point. point. Yeah. Uh, sorry, that is six point. Let me switch. You want me to switch over to four? Whatever, man. Okay. I like They're going to be close enough. I like six. Our uh, main Justin, leagues are six. Justin Herbert is uh, is number one in four point. Kirk Cousins is two. Tua is three. Jordan Love is four. And Patrick Mahomes is five right now. Top five running backs on the season, Raheem Mostert, <laughs> Christian McCaffrey, Kenneth Walker, Tony Pollard. And uh, number oh, five. Oh, I'm sorry. I hadn't sorted that one there. Uh, Mostert. Ah, see, games played. Yeah. Uh, I was not. I should look at total points. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I believe number five is uh, Devon, Devon A Chan. Yeah, Devon A Chan. Uh, yeah, A Chan. Oh yeah, Wait, let's yep. make that public service announcement sure. because it, even though we'll make it, mm -hmm. we will be getting a, a a pile of tweets saying we are now stupid. Yeah, we it, are. We are not stupid. I mean, we, we are, are not. Yeah. Did you hear the opening? <laughs> We're dumb. Devon A Chan yes. is the way that he has asked his name to be pronounced. They are changing the media guide. It is it, unfortunate it, for our rhyming schemes yeah. on the show. Yeah, it's it's really There's no more A chain <laughs> in the membrane or anything like that. Right. It's one of those things where it always surprises me when it takes this long. Like you were a prominent collegiate player. Some guys don't like to speak up about there it. There was though. a media guide. Isn't there a statute of limitations though? Yeah, I like no, you no. talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's his name. But, he can uh, wait till the, his dying breath. So we can make as many nicknames as we want about a player, and if they want to change their name, we have to throw them out? I, that's is that what you're saying? That yeah. is regrettably what so I'm saying. So it's Devon A-Chan. Yes. A-Chan. And, and Schefter tweeted that out. Forgive us for the next 200 yeah, we'll mess it up. Uh, mistakes. You think about the guys that printed the media guides and how many oh. trees they're wasting? Mm. That's, that's another thing on you, Devon. Uh, if but, it's even Devon. But the uh, points, total points, still Devon A. Chan. Chan. Devon A. Chan. <laughs> wow, that was quick. <laughs> Son of a gun. Uh, Mostert, McCaffrey, Walker, Pollard, A. Chan. Wide receivers right now, Tyreek, Keenan, Jefferson, Adams, Evans. And the tight end position is Hawkinson, Laporta. End of list. <laughs> Henry. Kelsey, but he's played one fewer game, and then Evan Ingram. Yeah. So it has been uh, – Somehow Evan Ingram has been the steady Eddie of the tight end position. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's like, been the least the, – The most boom-bust guy of last year to have like an end as a, with a good season. No, he's just cruising along. I think he has the third most yards at the position. He, he hasn't scored that. As we know, it's tough in the streets, man. Yes. Kittle and, and Waller are down at like seven and eight. Mm -hmm. Mark yeah. Andrews is top five points per game, but also missed a game. Is he? Yep. He had a touchdown. Oh, Touchdowns okay. solve everything. That, that's shocking and embarrassing for the tight end position. Right. I mean, because Mark Andrews had one good game out of his two, didn't play, 
Half your games being good at tight end is top five. Wow. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Derek Carr unlikely to play week four. So Jameis Winston ready and able to step in for the Saints. Does that mean Olave is going to score? It's possible. He has the most yards of any player without a touchdown at the wide receiver position. I believe he's at 302 yards on the year, zero touchdowns. Bryce Young, whether he'll play in week four, Frank Reich says, I don't know yet. I don't know. The Raiders confirmed Jimmy Garoppolo is in the concussion protocol. Uh, Brandon Ayuk participated in practice. Debo Samuel dealing with rib injury, not seen at practice. It is Tuesday, so we will keep our eyes on that. Uh, what else do we have? We have a David Montgomery limited report in mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. Aaron Jones limited. Christian Watson. Well, the, and these are also practice. these are estimates because this is the Thursday night matchup, so they don't actually practice Monday, but they put out the report of what they think would have happened. We get Lions Packers Thursday night. I guess. Well, I mean, you can't say I the first thing and not mean it. I'm reading what's on my show doc. Uh, is that Kyle confirmed over yes. there? We have a team of it is correct. experts. Yeah, yeah. Lions at Packers Thursday. That's a good game, right? Aren't yes. you? Yeah. I mean, no, that's oh, a yeah. fun that's one to see. That's definitely a good game. I mean, that's for the division. Uh, you, you would imagine at this point right now, the winner of this division is going to be one of these two teams. So early on, the, you know, whoever, if, if one team sweeps this series, that team's going to the playoffs. Well, let me let me throw this out there because we haven't gotten into our matchups and we haven't previewed that game. So I just want you to guess what the line is on the that lion? game. Lion? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Busted. Busted. Yeah, that was worse than busted. That was uh, that was some of my best work. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what the line is? Who's home? Green Bay. I'll go. Green Bay minus one and a half. That's what I was going to say. So I'll go minus two. It's Green Bay plus one and a half. Oh, uh, I was so I respect was, respect the rule. I was so close <laughs> to going minus one and a half Lions that which is what it is. That's it's 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 almost a pick 'em. I mean, it's just uh, this is going to be a battle. Great Thursday night matchup. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break and then back with a very important waiver wire segment. You see, Mike, it was, uh, he said lion, but it was supposed to be a play on line. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I. So, you get it now? I, I didn't actually. So that's maybe why I thought it was such a bad joke. But now? Now it's the bad joke. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Waiver Wire, presented by NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. All right, we are into the Waiver Wire. We're going to start at the running back position, but a reminder, Alvin Kamara is back. Yeah. Oh, well, well, well. And I had a couple teams that I forgot I had him on uh, on the roster sitting on my bench, not in the IR because he's suspended. Very delighted at the development, gaining a running back out of thin air. That it, it, it is nice. He tweeted out a very funny video. That was of, great. Of uh, him. It was some other viral video, and he put faces on it. It was a good time. Basically, he's he's guy, happy to be get, back. A guy getting out of prison yeah. and being welcomed back with open arms. So let's uh, let's throw this out there real quick. Alvin Kamara, rest of season, is the RB what? Putting you on the spot. 15. 15? That'd be dandy. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go running back two-ish. Okay. You guys, the, the assignment. We went, we went the assignment was uh, which done one differently. Of us, which one of us did it correctly? I was looking at what Jason was yeah. doing. Right. Oh, you want an exact answer? Yeah, I just thought that would be more entertaining. Running back 19. Okay. All right. I'll be right in between you two. I think about 15, 16. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, Cooper Cup, Jeff Wilson, and Tyquan Thornton eligible to come off of IR in week five. And uh, so we'll monitor those. Let's talk running backs. The most... You know, Mike, for for a guy that has said running backs, like you're done with them. Yeah. You're also the guy starting A.J. Dillon in our league of record. And I looked at your roster yesterday, mm -hmm. 
and you definitely took it to heart to not have any running backs. That is correct. So you might be hungry for some of these names. I am. Um, I have. I have not been. I've gauged our waiver wire spending incorrectly thus far and missed out on all the big acquisitions. So Devon A. Chan. Oh gosh, yeah, yep. it's hard. It's going to yep. take some time. He should at least give us. I don't know a two week grace period. Absolutely, right? I think he does. Okay. He's a very nice guy. Yeah. Uh, so this week takes on Buffalo, Devon A. Chan in Buffalo. And then it's the Giants in Carolina. You, I just said Jeff Wilson comes back next week. Salvin Ahmed, we don't know his practice status so far. What a, what a, uh, uh, you know, obviously the top priority is Devon Achan. You have to spend to pick him up because the possibilities are too valuable for your roster. And yet, the question is how much? How much fab do you spend? Yeah, first of all, on the Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson is eligible, just like all these players are eligible that were that started the season on the pup to be activated. I haven't heard a peep that he is expecting to. You know, when he went on pup, I believe uh, the head coach said, you know, we're hopeful that he could make it back this year. That doesn't sound like a guy who's preparing to come back, but if, if – uh, Kyle, if you want to do some there, research. There were two comments on it. There was one where he said uh, the first comment when he got put on IR was, we hope he makes it back this year. But then the second comment was re related to uh, the plan is to put him on for the four weeks and take him off. So we we have kind of conflicting outlooks. But yes, yes, let's not. It's not a guarantee that, that he's available. That being said, A-Chan A -chan is – right. Um, uh, is he's a player that after he was drafted to the Dolphins, we talked about what a perfect fit for this scheme, his speed, and the way that they design getting players just that sliver of space so that they can track meet away. Uh, he was perfect, and and you saw in his first real opportunity um, of his career that that's what's exciting, and that's why you want to go hard after a chan is because this was his first chance. All he did in his first chance was completely and utterly his first show up a chance all right better than better than lion let's not bring up the lion joke anymore oh, okay yeah let's that's let on, that die on me <laughs> yeah so what does that mean fab wise though i think that means you're probably going 45 to 55! that doesn't seem like it will get you devon a chance no no because especially based on the fact that we had uh, we we've had some big spending on the waiver wire and this is the biggest performance of the year, I don't think that gets him. If you need, if you want him and you believe, I think you got to spend more. And this I week agree. there just aren't good options. Like yeah. as far as people that are readily available, there's no one that is readily available that you're really gunning for. Make sure you are looking through though. Like see how much fab people have left because there's been. Through the first two weeks, I mean, there were huge running back pickups that people may have that they they could be depleted that they can't outbid you. I mean, Papa Josh, what did you spend a hundred on? Who did you spend a hundred on? Jerome Ford. Yeah, Jerome Ford was a one hundred pickup. Yeah. But Different scenario. Yeah, you know, you, he's the guy. So yeah, yes. I, I think seventy five is what you're going to see him going for. So are you willing? If you if you see him, he's on your waivers. Maybe your you're not running back absolute desperate, but you need another one. Like you, you've got, you've got. I'm a, not doing it. You're not spending seventy five hundred. No, no, because I don't. I see a a bumpy path That's for Devon H N, and it's not that he can't have big games. It's that I I see both sides of it. I mean, we had um, obviously a very different scenario, but first two carries of Brees Hall this year went for eighty something yards. The next twenty four carries went for like forty yards. Like explosive plays. Denver had laid down in a lot of respects. Buffalo is going to be a tougher challenge for sure. Uh, if I were projecting Devon H. N. this week, I think he's an RB two. There is a note that says Bills rush defense allowing the highest yards per carry in the NFL. Yeah. So okay, so give me then the number. You won't go seventy five. What is your number that you're going to put it in and be happy if you get him forty? Okay, so 40, 40 seems to be your limit. If I need a running back, it's a different story. This is why it's you know you can't just say he's worth this amount of money, um, or this amount of fab because right. if you if you desperately need a running back, he could be the solution to your problem. If you are kind of content on there, you know, 
who are you starting him over? That's another way to answer the sure. question, right? Like uh, AJ, I'd start him over AJ Dillon, guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the, pri- the answer that question about five times and add about ten fab every time you say I'd start him over. I mean, are you starting? Would you rather have Devon A. Chan or Isaiah Pacheco rest of the season? Ooh, I'd rather have the shot at A. Chan. I go Pacheco. That's I would slightly lean Pacheco. Would you rather have DeAndre Swift or Devon A. Chan? Swift. Swift. Okay, we uh, let's go to some of these medium starts at running back. I'd rather have him over Rashad White. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's for sure. Who they just they keep giving him the ball. Oh, he's getting work. I he mean, is getting work. And you know, if he plays the Bears again, he's, he's gonna doing be his, just fine. Doing I, his best. I don't like the the Rashad White slander. I really don't, because it's it's all a matter of perspective. This is fantasy football one hundred and one. Okay, last year. Leonard Fournette's running the football, and Rashad White's everybody's dream. Let's get Rashad White the ball because Fournette's too slow. Now Rashad White's the running back, and it's like, ah, oh, this guy sucks. Let's give it to Sean Tucker, who's done nothing. We just are unhappy with inefficient performances and then yeah. throw them out the window. I thought Rashad White looked good on several plays last night. One play. One play. I yeah. thought he looked good on one play yeah. last okay. night. If you yeah. take that one, <laughs> that one play out, he was 13 for – uh, You're playing the Eagles. Yeah, I mean, look, does that not matter? No, does it matters. Brees Hall it, suck it, after last week's performance? It it, it definitely matters. Uh, Zach Wilson does suck. Yes. Um, uh huh. Yeah. No, they, so they, if Brees has a bad game, it's Zach Wilson's fault. If Rashad has a bad game, it's Rashad's fault. Uh, Rashad has had a bad game almost all of his games of his career. No, he has not. Uh, that no, is not true. Efficiency wise, that I'm saying not. like he's had good fantasy games. Due it's to just volume narr- he, and catching the football, yes. Also, I, that's not just volume. I mean, it's being effective in the passing game. No, no, no. You just those dumping on no, it. But those are different things. Effective in the passing game is he, different than getting receptions. He can't, what do you? He can't do anything but catch the ball thrown to him where it's thrown to him. That's not his fault, right? And he can't do anything with it after that. Is my point? <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! This is ridiculous. I uh, mean, no, no. He uh, was five point eight yards of reception last year. That's my point. It's like he was never good at it. He Have was, you ever seen some of these running backs that can't do that? Because there's a lot yeah, of them. Catching the ball is itself a skill. Plus, we're talking about fantasy value. You know, what happens is the point. We, we care about the points on the on the football field. They got manhandled last night. Baker had a pretty bad game. He did. So, uh, But the point on. stands, I would rather have him than Rashad White. Would you rather have Rashad White? Than HN? Yeah. No. No, so we fought for nothing. Uh, <laughs> Kenneth Gainwell. <laughs> Kenneth Gainwell, 60% rostered. Probably going to go eh, – I don't know if it'll go down. Running backs are hard to come by. But uh, 14 for 43 last night, two targets. Saw the field about as much as DeAndre Swift did. Swift did get stuffed on, I think, three straight goal line carries DeAndre, last like, night, which is uh, – you know, he could have had a bigger game is all I'm saying. Yeah, the, the way I look at Swift is he kind of is in the perfect place for his skill set, which his skill set is – he is an incredibly athletic running back. I'm not sure that he's a good running back, like v- vision, decision making. But if it's there, he is. You pretty laid it out perfectly. He has the speed to uh, to break through the line. He reminds me where, of, of Spiller, Javid Best, right. like we, some of those guys. You just so it can shoot him s- out of a cannon. It will still work for DeAndre Swift. Uh, Gainwell, I think, is still a pretty strong add if he happens to be sitting on your waiver wire because it's it's hard to get work. 16 opportunities, that's fantastic. I would love to have that for my RB2. Well, let's talk. Uh, Jalen Warren, 63% rostered, takes on Houston this week. I think Jalen Warren's a pretty solid add. He's a great add. He's not available in most leagues, but there's still almost 40% of leagues he is out there. He should be available in zero leagues. If you're in a league where Jalen Warren is out there, this is a player you can throw in your flex on a weekly basis. And we've already seen like a couple of times this year where Najee looked for a moment like, oh no, is Najee hurt? And man alive, he just, like, I, I kind of refused. I was so pro Jalen Warren all off season. He was a guy I, I talked up on all the sleeper episodes, yeah, and true. I really wanted you to, to to draft because I think he's super talented. But even then, I was not someone that thought he could play his way into being maybe the the one on this team. And I don't if, know if he can. I mean, he might not be able to, but it's it it seems it seems actually possible that it could be an 
a near even split by the end of the season. And before the season, That's I thought fair. that was impossible. Yeah, I I feel like they have this undying loyalty to Najee. Like Najee must be bringing the coffee every morning to Mike Tomlin and bringing him his paper and saying cuz the paper people right. People yeah. Tomlin's yeah, a paper. They guy. read the paper. Uh but yeah, Warren in a 50-50 split, I could see that. Uh when we're talking about lower rostered running back options, people you want to take a chance on. Who's the maybe the top two or three guys that we haven't talked about. Yeah, the, uh, for me, the top two guys, uh, Matt Breida, if you need a start, I still don't believe Saquon Barkley is going to be active for this game. It is a much better matchup than we saw last week. So in a pinch, like, oh gosh, I, I, have, to, yeah, I, I have to actually yeah. play someone. He would be the guy. Um, if you're just looking more for a good stash, Tajay Spears. Tajay Spears, the rookie running back on the Tennessee Titans who is out snapping Derrick Henry right now. Um, he's an explosive playmaker. If the wheels fall off in Tennessee or Derrick Henry continues to look bad, he's an interesting stash to me. And you can Do look you think at Henry could get traded. Absolutely. If, if I think yeah. he's if, a prime candidate for a trade this year. If the Titans were to lose their next two or three games, which seems possible, they haven't really been outstanding. I think this is a, a very well managed, well coached smart organization and you might go hey Derrick Henry's not our future we're not going to make the this isn't our year let's get something for him now uh, I could see that happening I better get him on the field and have him play better <laughs> so that <laughs> someone wants to trade yeah. for him I think his uh yeah I think the pedigree history would I think teams would be all over it I yeah, don't if, think they if, would care about this year at all if uh p perfect example I think if if James Cook went down to injury if uh, you know uh, some unfortunate situation like that for a team like the Bills, I think they would come knocking. Uh, and, and make sure you are paying attention to the Baltimore Ravens situation. It is a situation of of unknowns. Gut Edward, Gus Edwards, Gus Bus. Gut, good, good, good. good. I'm sorry, Gus. <laughs> I thought it was gut. Uh, he was having himself an okay day, and then he left uh, the game with a concussion. Justice Hill did not play. I believe that was a uh, toe injury so we don't know if those guys will be ready to go if they aren't melvin gordon kenny drake are the next <laughs> people look it's disgusting same old stuff yeah. for the ravens and even worse they are playing on the road against the cleveland browns so this is break glass in case of emergency but you should use glass <laughs> on yourself That's, oh, i don't think you want this man uh, the, it's the break browns. glass and end it yeah oh, but man. the browns That's brutal the Browns defense has been good and and I meant to come in today and just say after the weekend like I had the Browns last place in the division on our division preview. I apologize. I think the Browns are outstanding. Like they're going to contend. Who picked them to win the division? Did you? Yeah. Good job. Uh yeah, they need a better quarterback. He he he's, looked he's fine. He for looked the, for, bad. This he's, last week he did not look bad. The 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 bail out, man. Yeah. Bail out. I thought he looked fine. Yeah, I did too. Uh, first, uh, first time in years. He's also had two top ten finishes in three weeks I, for I, fantasy. Yeah, I get that. He'd, how Jordan can loves you say the top he looked five bad? Twenty seven for thirty three, eighty two percent passing, two touchdowns, no picks. He's that's that's bad take. <laughs> There's no statistical reason you could say that. Uh, I could say that statistically that Jalen Hurts had himself a good game, but he looked bad. 82% passer, counter, two touchdowns, man. no interceptions. Uh, numbers, what looked bad? He was playing quarterback. Like he just he does not look to me like he's back. You're just saying he's ugly. Like he looked bad. Like sure. he's just like man, Six this completions sure. as you're dogging ugly, on him. He just looks like he stinks. Let someone else chase <laughs> after Jarek McKinnon. He only had five touches in the game. Two of them happened to be this touchdowns. Is, this is what he does. I have no interest. Um I also think you should be looking at Kendra Miller still. Kendra Miller yeah. did not do something special in his opportunity, but that was his first game back, first game as a rookie, first game from an injury. He split time with uh, Tony Jones, and Kendra Miller will get more. Uh, I know it's like, oh, Alvin Kamara's back, so Kendra Miller's done. Well, Jamal Williams went on IR. Um, I, I believe Kendra Miller, sooner rather than later, will completely overtake Tony Jones and still have the opportunity of the Jamal Williams role. You know, it's like, would Jamal Williams, if it was just Williams and Kamara on waivers, would you grab him? Of course you would. Well, I think Kendra Miller ends up in yep. that role.
are you dropping Josh Kelly? The sunk cost fallacy of you spent fab on him, yep. and are you moving on? Are you I, you going to put put it this way? Are you going to start him? I think I would start no, him. What you would start him if the yeah I would I would take the chance on him if I had to. Wow. I mean it's all about the options you have, but would you start him or AJ Dillon? You start AJ Dillon, uh, right? AJ Dillon. I mean I would I would start. He hasn't scored four fantasy points. Yeah. In the yeah. last two weeks, and it was, was against the Minnesota Vikings. Like, yeah, he plays I, the Raiders, it's and he's going to be the starting running back. It's you could say the exact same thing about he plays the Vikings, and he's going to be the starting running yeah, back. No, and right. I did. If but you're they, not they did going, lose Mike Williams. This is the question: when, when you're saying should I drop Joshua Kelly? Look at your roster. If you know you're going to start him, there's your answer. Obviously, don't drop him. If you're not going to start him this week, get Move him off on your and roster. Get, get somebody better on Absolutely. the roster. Absolutely. Okay, that makes sense. Wide receiver pickups. Who's your top three names this week? I mean, Tank Dell, if he happens to be there. Uh, the guy, we now have two games of Tank Dell as a rookie. He looks like a baller. C.J. Stroud looks like he is absolutely for real. Uh, so he would be the my, my number one pickup. If you are looking for a spot start this week, yes, I will admit it, Adam Thielen, old man. This week against the the Minnesota Vikings, especially if it is uh, uh, still Andy Dalton as the quarterback, so he's a spot starter. Wide receiver seven on the year. Yeah, no, he's 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 a starter. He is a starter on an NFL team that is accurate. And then, man, Minnesota, that, Detroit, Miami the next three weeks for Adam. Yeah, that's, he's, that's pretty great. <laughs> I think he's a better pickup than Tank Dell. For this, these three weeks, he absolutely. Well, no, I wouldn't do that. He absolutely could be argued to be the number one pickup. A Adam Thielen is a great pickup, and we have uh, besmirched his age. He looks okay right now. He is getting the ball right now. He's sounding good. He's sounding <laughs> like this. He's a young man all of a sudden. the The next three matchups are fantastic, and I'm, I'm hooked. Breaking news on a Thielen. I, I saw your finger on a button, Andy, I'm sorry. and I, I thought you were ready to be hooked on a Thielen, and we, I gave... We can't play that one anymore. Oh, We're not allowed. Stupid was. <laughs> uh, the Jets have added Trevor Simeon to the quarterback room. They have signed Trevor Simeon. Okay. Starting quarterback, he's Trevor Simeon. He's better. Probably better he's than He's definitely better. He's not going to be the starter. They're not bringing him in for this, you know, to be the starter. But at some point soon, there will be. I'm guessing hangnail, but it could be something else oh, um, that happens to Zach Wilson. It, yeah, I mean there there will be a, a, with the a very tiny injury that Cavities. will allow the Jets. And this isn't even a joke. Like I, I actually think this is the path that they will end up having to so take. that they don't have to trade or cut him. Yeah, so that they so that they can kind of stick to their guns. He's their dude. We love him. We hope he comes back soon. He's just not. He's struggling with this injury, so we're gonna give him some chance to recover. Probably just put him on the IR, but we're gonna bring him back soon. Um, so yeah, Trevor Simeon here, should here, probably be picked up if you're in a two quarterback league. I think that when they move on from Zach Wilson, it has to be goodbye. Because I can't foresee a scenario where you they paint. Can't, they can't though. Where you paint the picture. Yeah, but look. Zach Wilson has already failed. Then he's failing this time. This time he has Garrett Wilson and Lazard and weapons. He's got a defense that's otherworldly, and he's failing. There isn't a better scenario you'll ever get to have him succeed. He's also been now mentored and had an offseason with Aaron Rodgers. Like, I, wa I actually I was rooting for him, and I watched him come off the field with Robert Sala. Did you see that clip? No. No, I haven't seen it. You don't want to see it. Oh no! I really like want to there, see head hanging there's, down. There's us kind of joking around about Zach Wilson, but then there's what the crowd was yelling. Oh no! When Sal Sala and and Zach Wilson came walking off the field together, and some of the stuff getting yelled. Yeah, I don't want to see it. I'm. I just. It's unfortunate because you can just not be good, and that's okay. Like that's just the reality of the situation. He could be a backup and make a bunch of money for ten years. So the Jets. If they do move on it next year, it would be an eleven point one million dollar dead cap hit. So I guess that's yeah, not nothing. That's not insurmountable. No, and and look at the draft class of co the quarterbacks in that draft class. It's not T worked. R A S H all of them with well, one. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence at yeah. the top, who's probably going to be fine, 
But, you know, Lance and Wilson and everybody else on Fields. that list. Fields. It's not been good. But anyways, we're back. Uh, right. Tank Dell, Adam Thielen. If you yeah. if you don't need Thielen soon, then Tank Dell's a great pickup because he's got higher ceiling. He's got a future. He's got a quarterback I really believe in and C.J. Stroud. And I would spend more on Tank Dell than I would Adam Thielen. Yeah. Uh, definitely. He is a rookie who is showing out. And when you – you know, that, that's part of why HN is so special is because there's, you know, look, the, the path for both of these rookies is more probable that they don't continue getting massive work and they just become, you know, a, a, a decent uh, matchup play. But there's also the, the path where it's like, this is a star and th these are their coming out parties and we're about to see it. So you've got to take the chance at a guy like Tank Dell who had insane production you look at the first read targets through the first three weeks for tank dell week one 14 percent of first read targets week two 21 percent week three 31 percent of the first reads went to tank dell he's looked great and i i'm not afraid of the pittsburgh steelers to the degree that i feel like well you've got to stash tank dell i'm 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 gonna play tank dell and the the those like the numbers are crossfading for tank dell and nico collins i'm not out on nico but just saying Tank Dell is like Tank Dell's their number one wide receiver already. You can't have two first read targets <laughs> on the same play. Right. Uh there's there's actually there's a lot of wide receivers who are yes. worth talking about. We haven't even gotten into the Chargers. So Mike Williams out for the season with the ACL. You they spent a first round draft pick on Quentin Johnston who has been unable to get on the field. Joshua Palmer has been on this team for a long time and He's not a true number one. Is he a number two type of receiver if with when he's on the field with Keenan Allen? So how are you guys viewing looking at picking up Palmer or or Quentin Johnston? If I needed to start this week, it's Palmer. Okay. Uh much like the Thielen. It's Thielen and Palmer in that category. And then if I am investing in my future, then it's Quentin Johnston. It's spinning up on Tank Dell. Um I think Tank Dell's both, I guess. Tank Dell is a start and a, a stash. Quentin Johnston, though, the ceiling has to be higher for him than Josh Palmer because we've seen him in a starting role. I'm definitely picking up Quentin Johnston over Josh Palmer because if I need a start this week, there are other wide receivers I prefer to start this week than Josh Palmer. I'd, I'd rather start DJ Chark uh, playing against Minnesota uh, than I would Joshua Palmer. We've, we've seen Joshua Palmer disappoint a lot. Romeo Dobbs is a great pickup. He's available in half of leagues. He's playing against Detroit. We talked about that in Thursday night. Um there are so if I need a start, it's not Quentin Johnston because Quentin Johnston, I don't think you want to throw him right in your lineup. I'm basically, I think I just don't care that much about Jordan Paul. Let, let me Paul. make life difficult for you. Perfect. Right, I'm going to read you stat lines from a wide receiver that's going to come up in the. You know, we're we're talking about Tank Dell. We're talking about Quentin Johnston. Three for thirteen. Three for thirteen. Bad. Five for thirty-four. Bad. One for ten. Awful. Snap count, 59%, then 56%, then 44%. Okay. This is the first wide receiver drafted. Oh, JSN? JSN. Oh, man. Jackson Smith and Jigba on the season. What you doing, Seahawks? Is uh, is getting underutilized. I'm seeing sad faces in the slack when I revealed this. Uh, very low average depth of target, very low utilization. I mean, we don't have infinite benches, Mike. Are you are you trading JSN and moving on? If I – again, this is based off your team. If you have to make a move right now to get production, you you got to do it. You have to move on. You cannot keep waiting for the breakout. Like, I, ex I do expect by the second half of the year, those numbers for, for JSN will be much better. But that's a projection. That's a breakout. You need – Point. Some teams are 0-3. Some teams are 1-2, and you need points right now. So I'm looking at mm, these other wide receivers over him right now. Josh Downs had 12 targets this past yeah. week. Just 8 for 57 on him, but you would take that in a PPR yep. league every day of the week, something to pay attention to when we're talking about rookies. I still I still think it will that will go down when Anthony Richardson comes back because that was a Gardner Minshew game, and, and Downs was not – we were talking about Downs when Anthony Richardson was there, so I agree – you, you should be looking his way, but I wouldn't expect him to have that kind of PPR volume with Richardson back at quarterback. Yeah, it'll go down. And and the truth is, is I just like the fact he's on the field all the time. 
I got it. And In- Tutu Atwell last night, if he's available in your league still. Yeah, he's just he keeps getting it done. He's a, he's a focal point. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that comes through. I got a stash question for you. Okay. Would you be pre- preferring to stash JSN right now or Marvin Mims of the Denver Broncos? Fair question. Who, Marvin Mims, I don't know what Coach Payton is doing, but uh, Marvin Mims, all the guy is doing for the team is – being an absolute electric producer every time he touches the ball, and they're not giving him snaps. Here's the biggest challenge to me with Marvin Mims, and maybe they play – what's their three-wide percentage? Because maybe we can get him out there all the time. But I don't see any scenario where Judy or Sutton are taking a backseat to Mims based on what we've seen so far this year. And that that part concerns me. He's played 27%, 24%, 24% of the snaps. Yeah, and I don't, but I don't know how often they're running. Uh, they were trying to run two tight and, end versus three wide out. And but, yet, the past two weeks has been a top twenty fantasy oh, I kn- wide receiver. I know, but you know, kick return that's not going to happen every week. Who? What's your answer, Jay? Mims or JSN? Um, I would stay JSN. I, I I would lean JSN still. Uh, I want both these guys on my roster. This is not anti Mims. I want to see more and more of Mims. We're going to talk about him. Um, oh, you know. A little uh, hungry, little, little hungry little fella, little, uh, little <laughs> hungry little fella. <laughs> I've only had snacks, and now I'm looking for a meal. Um, I want it to be Marvin Mims. All, All right, right. Uh, that's weird. He's uh, a snack. Tight end pickups <laughs> this week. It is. Uh, it's gross. It's gross. My my number one pickup is going to be Luke Musgrave. The matchup with Detroit on Thursday night is outstanding. Not good. Outstanding. Uh, they're one of the worst in the league against tight ends. They've been given up double digits every single week. So for me, it's Musgrave because I see the athletic, like I see the potential there. Yeah, he's no, missed no, on yeah. some big plays, just barely. He's yeah, Musgrave is, is Musgrave is the pickup. Um, and then and then Fergie. Yeah, Ferguson has been uh, twenty seven point four percent targets per route run this season. That's good. Um, he's finding himself in a very uh, historically valuable role being the tight end one for Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. So uh, Fergie would be my number two. Musgrave would be my number one. Fergie just doesn't have a lot of great matchups coming up. He's got the Patriots and the San Francisco 49ers um, in the next two weeks. So I'm not sure you're looking forward to starting him, whereas Musgrave has the Detroit Lions followed by the Raiders. So he he would be the the main pickup. You can always take a shot on Taysom Hill. I know he didn't do anything, but like anytime you're looking at a trash heap, and you're like, oh, man, am I going to pick up this awful player or that awful player? Just look at ceiling and say they all have a floor of zero. Every waiver fodder tight end has a floor of zero. There's only like Taysom that has a ceiling of 20, although his ceiling is probably even higher. Sure. Uh, all righty. Um, good luck at tight end, everybody. There's not a lot. I mean, you don't just want to chase two targets – for four yards and two touchdowns with Donald Parhamburglar. But he's done it multiple times now. Yeah, I, I mean, The sure. touchdown machine. If you want to place a touchdown potential bet, then sure. And maybe the role increases for him and Everett because of the lack of Mike Williams. But Maybe. Good luck. Uh, defensive options. If you're streaming this week, if you're looking for a start, Cleveland's under 50% rostered. They're the number one defense in terms of yards allowed, points per game allowed points per game allowed and they play Baltimore at home Baltimore's offense is one struggling. injured two struggling yeah it's the Bengals and Browns as the available pickups that you want to start the Bengals playing I have them both and I don't know who to start you were talking about it this morning you you had <laughs> pre-picked struggling him up. He, I, I come in and I'm looking at what he's looking at on his computer and I'm like what what, what are you what are you doing there and yeah he's digging into Browns versus Bengals so let's just let's say both of these are here how how have you decided to sort it as of this moment? People are going to need to put it in their waiver claims. If both are there, what's the order? The order for me is the Bengals over the Browns because the matchup against Tennessee is good and they play Arizona the following week. And Seattle the next week. Yeah, and the Browns go into a bye week after the Baltimore game. However, the Browns might be the kind of defense you don't want to let go. If they dominate Baltimore this week, they put up numbers. Like Miles Garrett sacks the quarterback – but the potential for a big – I always think about that with my defense. I'm like, what are the odds I get bamboozled here, right? Right. 
the Ravens are the kind of team that could put up a ton of points. I don't know if Tennessee can do that. So I lean Bengals, but um, that's a tough one. There's also another team I, I'm going to throw out there. You're going to – No, it, it must be said, Jason. The team that just gave up 70 points <laughs> – to the Dolphins, the Denver Broncos, the uh, awful-looking defense that basically laid down and forgot how to tackle, they get to play the Chicago Bears. And it's the ultimate push-comes-to-shove situation. <laughs> like I, I'm fine picking them up and playing them. I they, really am. They are now the like, – I was waiting for these to come through after that performance. But they are now the 31st against quarterbacks, 32nd against running backs, 27th against wide receivers. So that one game, pick them up. It's the uh, the old fashioned stoppable force versus a movable object. Oh, that's yeah, right, yeah, the classic. That's right. <laughs> yeah, the uh, man, the Chicago Bears offense. P U. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, yeah, it's tough. But it's it, I would uh, the Bengals at least the roster percentages we're seeing it. The Bengals are same as the Broncos. But maybe you're in a deeper league, and honestly, I think the the Broncos will be okay. The Steelers, if they were there, only oh uh, for sure. You know they're seventy percent rostered. The Colts, six percent rostered. Play the Rams. Rams have struggled two weeks in a row now, on the offensive side, finishing drives, offensive line woes, sacks given up. Uh, this past week they weren't giving them up, but then they gave up I think six last night, mm -hmm. maybe seven, and so then they play Tennessee the next week. Yeah, and so that's a that's another like. Did you bring up the Saints? I did not bring them. So the Saints but are a great defense. They're a great defense. The Saints and the Steelers are mostly rostered, but still available in 35 to 40% of your leagues. And those two defenses, I'm just all in on believing. Like, I, I think I'm going to start them in kind of like the Browns. Until proven otherwise, unless it's the Chiefs, I'm starting them against everybody. All right. Thanks again to our sponsor, NFL Sunday Ticket, on YouTube and YouTube TV with NFL Sunday Ticket. It has never been easier to keep up with all of your fantasy players. Sign up at youtube.com slash fantasy footballers. One more segment. Full stream ahead. Well, it's time to look for some quarterback streaming options. And there are, there are a few and you might not smile when you see them in your starting roster, but you may after the week is done, I'm going to go with the Thursday night matchup, Jordan Love, quarterback four on the season. The efficiency, it's improbable. It makes no sense. And yet Thursday against Detroit, it seems like it could continue. He's also averaging 25 rushing yards a game, so it's that little boost at the, uh, you know, giving you a little bit higher floor for, for Jordan Love. Uh, that would be like about 425 a year on the yeah. ground. That is not – Yeah, we'll take that. It's not nothing. So I'm going to go Jordan Love against Detroit at home in Lambeau. Yeah. I'm also taking them to win that game. I, for what it's worth. Oh, I like it. I like it. They've mm. they've been in every game. I it, bet Al likes that. Nah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll um, take the pack. I'm gonna. That, that's who I that's, took. That's, that's who, who I took. You should listen yeah. to the show. Come oh, on, I'm man. I'm sorry. I thought you took the Lions. No. Nope. Yeah. Mm, you should pay attention. Uh, for my streaming candidate, he is available in 100 percent of leagues, as is Mike's. Um, it's Jameis Winston, famous Jameis gonna get out there, throw a couple tutties, throw a couple picks, do what he does. Uh, last year, you know, with this same offense, we saw him come out week one, be a top 10 fantasy quarterback, uh, in relief last week, played like 35% of the snaps. I think somewhere right around there had over a hundred yards, completed 63% of his passes. He's got Michael Thomas. He's got Chris Olave. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he is Kamara now too. Yeah. And <clears throat> cool revenge game he's playing against the tampa bay buccaneers okay you how dare you let me he's go. not he's not capable of revenge no that's the happiest no. man on earth there's he, nobody more joyful happy and content in all phases of life than Jameis winston he is if i may use this word just adorable <laughs> i mean i mean Dude, Jameis winston, he really his is. interviews his he, positivity is contagious i mean sometimes he comes across he's a goofball just, it's such a goofball yeah but he is absolutely did you see the adorable. Video? Yeah, that he is the. Did you see the video of Brady talking about the getting the edge in games and what made he would look for? It's uh -huh. like Kobe. Yeah. It's like oh, Jordan. Yeah. You know, he looks for the smallest offense, and and that mm -hmm. gives him the fire to want to 
burn your soul? That's something Jameis could never oh, do. Oh, no. He's that's... like, good tackle, good tackle. Man. Nice sack, nice sack. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, man, nice interception. I'm so, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I promise you Jameis Winston is an incredible hugger. There's no way mm-hmm. he doesn't give oh, fantastic yeah. just bear, just hug. bear yeah, hugs. Yeah, yeah, Pick yeah. you up a little. Oh yeah. If yeah. if Papa Josh and Jameis Winston were together, that'd be trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of there, uh, Mike. I will go. <laughs> Look. I never thought we'd see this day. Steal underpants. It's time to steal up, baby. Oh <laughs> <What>? yeah! <laughs> Surprise drop. Steal underpants. We're taking the player who replaced Jameis Winston. It is. Andy Dalton, but he will be playing the Minnesota Vikings. Last week, Dalton threw the ball 58 times. He also plays for the Panthers, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Eight times? Look, 360, two passing touchdowns. Gets to play Minnesota. (laughs) I want the drop again. Do you? (laughs) Yeah. I want to see it again. Steal Oh, yeah. That's a a great one. Minnesota just allowed uh, Mr. Herbert to have his first ever 400-plus yard game. They're allowing a 76% completion rate. and like, Who's he going to throw it to? Me. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Who's he going to oh. throw it to, Jason? Me. And Adam hey, Thielen. You want to talk about revenge games? Adam Thielen versus wow, the former squad. that's a squad. good point. He's, I might like the 58 pass attempts and the fact Minnesota will undoubtedly score. I might like this Dalton stream better than all of them. It's like... Is going to be nasty. It's full steel ahead. Yeah. Oh, it is steel underpants. <laughs> but sometimes you put them on, mm-hmm. you feel safer. Yes, you do. From all the perils Dif- of life. Mm-hmm. Ain't, ain't no crotch shots happening when no. you're wearing steel underpants. Go no, ahead, no. try it. <laughs> try it, Mac Jones. <laughs> oh, break oh. that hand. What is he doing? He's punching other men in the crotch. And see, that's <laughs> we frown on that. Yeah. That's a real no no. That I, loses me respect for you. I think we're in. Like this is a unanimous agreement that yeah. punching another guy in, in, in the junk the crotch is, is I I call allowed. it a low blow. Yes, I give <laughs> Mac Jones just a teeny bit of credit because he almost hit it perfectly from the camera. Yeah, so there is a little was... bit of I mean that I, we talked about the NFL. They don't have enough cameras mm-hmm. to catch all the crotch shots Gotta that happen. The crotch games going. Um, <laughs> crotch oh, game. No. Boy, you know what'd be fun is to have oh, a. No. Uh, a camera like on the helmet for like a fumble and see what happens in the pile. Ooh, actually, that would be legit fun. Just a, gr- a GoPro sticking up off the top of everyone's <laughs> helmet. But yes, one of the tenants of our company, and I, I think Deucer's Alley can attest yeah, to this. Of course. We've really put this at the forefront when of we, our mission. When we when we interview for a job, we, we make sure that people are aligned with this. We're like, yeah. uh, gentlemen, nothing to the crotch yeah. around here. Right. Yeah. Only fakes. Sometimes I you give, can't. There have I been some Al, fakes. I yeah. give Al some fakes. So sorry. I um, I'm guessing he lunges away. Yeah. Well. Yeah, but that's yeah. We shouldn't suck about that on the air. <laughs> um. All right. Anything else? Uh, you dropping Justin Fields to play any of those three? Oh no. Oh. No. So does that mean you're playing Justin Fields, Jason? Well, it, over I, those I, three. I think the answer he, is yes. The, uh, if if that's what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, I mean, there's can, probably someone else on your roster that you can. You can you're not. You, so you're going to roster two quarterbacks? Yes, yeah, so I think yeah. Justin Fields is the type of quarterback right now that you that if you don't want to start him, I I I personally would not want to drop him. So yeah, I mean, at that point, you might pick one of these players up and play him over Justin Fields if you feel confident. Um, I mean, feel free to drop him if you've felt the scars and you're mad and you need that, uh, you know, cathartic action. I think you can. But again, if he, if he, he will be on many waivers this coming yes, week. Yes, he will. And I don't think we have properly talked about drop it like it's hot enough this season. But when your waivers run tomorrow, you need to look not just at who got picked up, but who was dropped because you're going to have the Denver Broncos dropped after their putrid performance and you're going to have Justin Fields dropped after his putrid start to the season well those two teams play each other so they're probably both okay yeah it's uh going to feel like a bounce back for one of them because they both can't lose right they both cannot both teams cannot lose congrats to both fan bases on that uh anything else you guys want to discuss We've got Hungry for More, Let's Talk Trades, looking at trade for and trade away players on tomorrow's episode of the podcast. Starts of the week, matchup previews on Thursday. 
Fantasy Face Off, Wheel of Shame will be skipping this oh, week on man. Friday. Oh, man. And uh, Wheel of, Guys, Wheel of Shame is going perfect for me. <laughs> yes, it is. Are you, You're just, uh, just cruising in second, second baby. Second place. All right. That'll do it for today's show. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.